Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Well, there is just a couple of days left until the uh, the close of the uh, the summer transfer window, and uh, as you'd expect with Middlesbrough, it is all going on as we uh, try to wrap up our uh, our summer transfer business. Uh, before I get into the uh, the comings and goings of uh, of what's going on at the moment, um, as ever, I do really appreciate your uh, your support on the uh, the YouTube channel, um, and uh, any further support will be very much appreciated. So if you if you do like what you're seeing, or you've got any uh, suggestions of what you'd like me to do moving forward. Uh, please do like the video uh, please leave your comments and suggestions below as well and uh, most importantly please do uh, subscribe to the other uh, channel as well so I can see uh, how many of you are actually enjoying the uh, the content so um, yes summer transfer window all but done uh, middles were uh, really being linked with a lot of different players now as we move into the other uh, final days of the transfer window um, obviously we've been very busy over the course of the summer already we've brought in nine new players um, I think the, the problem is that a lot of those players are very much um, signings for the future um, a lot of them haven't really been able to break into uh, Michael Carrick's first team um, just yet um, and so a lot of them will be potentially heading out on loan um, supplementing the first team squad and hopefully challenging for uh, for precious minutes um, over the uh, the coming months um, obviously you've got Lucas Engel you've got uh, Emmanuel Latte Laff who's looking very impressive already um, Senny Dieng people like that who are very much first team regulars uh, Morgan Rogers as well um, but yeah, the others, not so much just yet. And I think that's the reason why um, the final days of the transfer window are going to be really important to, uh, to make sure that we are adding the, uh, the required quality to, uh, to try and push for promotion this season and um, hopefully follow up on what we, uh, what we so nearly achieved uh, last season with, uh, with promotion. So yeah, a few high profile names being linked with Middlesbrough actually um, in, the, in, the, in the last couple of days. Um, Nat Phillips is one of them. Um, I think Middlesbrough had been really been targeting uh, more attacking reinforcements. So um, the name of a centre-back was uh, a little bit of a surprise, to be honest. But Nat Phillips, who uh, of course plays for Liverpool, um, reports from the Athletic saying that um, he could be joining on uh, on loan. Middlesbrough amongst uh, a number of clubs who are interested in, uh, in bringing him in. Um, in terms of his background, he's, uh, he's 26 years old. Um, he's made 29 appearances for Liverpool. Um, and that's included playing the, uh, the full 90 minutes um, in a Champions League win against uh, AC Milan in uh, 2018. Um, and then he played um, both 90 minutes of the uh, Champions League quarterfinal against Real Madrid when, uh, when Liverpool suffered a, uh, a bit of a defensive injury crisis in, uh, in 2021. So he hasn't played a huge amount of first team football, probably less than you'd expect for a, a player that's um, 26 years of age. Um, but for someone who was uh, really gained that experience on the uh, on the highest um, at the highest level on the uh, the biggest stages of all in in the Champions League, um, he is someone who could be a really good addition and someone who could bolster that defence. Given just how uh, how sort of leaky we've been in the uh, the first few weeks of the uh, of the season, so that'll be a very interesting one to um, to keep an eye out as a bit of a wild card kind of deal. Um, reports really have been suggesting that Middlesbrough are going to be targeting a, a central midfielder. Um, a number 10 and a, a centre forward as well. They're going to be the three kind of positions um, of priority uh, going into the uh, the last couple of days of the window. So central midfielder really is going to be a, a replacement for, uh, for Alex Mowat, who, uh, who was on loan with Middlesbrough last season. Um, he's obviously gone back to West Brom and we haven't really replaced him. Uh, Martin Piero has been there or thereabouts during pre-season, but he hasn't really featured yet. So there's a, I suppose there's a, a decent chance that he could eventually move on um, before the end of this window as well. But one of the players who's been linked is um, is Lewis O'Brien. Um, so he's a 24-year-old central midfielder. Um, he joined uh, Nottingham Forest from uh, from Huddersfield uh, last summer, so 2022, um, after they uh, secured promotion to the Premier League. And he made 17 appearances for them um, at the City Ground last season, but couldn't quite force his way into uh, to Steve Cooper's plans. Um, obviously, Steve Cooper and Nottingham Forest have bought bloody about 40 players last season, so it's not really much of a surprise that he couldn't... Um, make that starting spot his own uh, but he did certainly try his best um, and he ended up going out on loan to, uh, to DC United uh, for the second half of the season uh, where he was playing under under Wayne Rooney. Um, I think the situation hasn't really improved for him at the city ground this season and so playing first team football is going to be a priority and uh, given just how influential he was um, for Huddersfield in the championship um, it seems like a move back to the other second tier is going to be a, a priority for him so in terms of what could be expected from him, um, he's a player who is um, he's tough in the tackle. He's a little tough cookie, but at the same time, he's a real ball-playing um, specialist, I guess. He's someone who likes to get on the ball in those deep-lying positions. He's a proper Michael Carrick type of player. I could really see him complimenting um, the likes of Johnny Housen and Hayden Hackney 
in, a, in that deep lying role, and um, he was uh, he was heavily linked with a move to Leeds um, a couple of years back when under, under Marcelo Bielsa. He was someone who was uh, really highly thought of at Ellen Road, but they just couldn't really um, strike that deal with Huddersfield, who were demanding quite a lot of money. I remember at the time, I think they were demanding about twenty million for him. Um, obviously, he got his move to the Premier League in the end with Nottingham Forest, but it hasn't quite worked out. Um, and so uh, a, lo- uh, a loan deal to uh, to the championship could be a, a good move. And if he did come in, it would be a great deal for, uh, for Middlesbrough. Um, on the topic of Leeds, uh, Sam Greenwood is another one who's been uh, linked with a move. Um, for those that don't know about him, he's a, he's a 21-year-old. He, uh, he started his career with, uh, with Sunderland. He's a uh, Sunderland lad. Um, was in their youth setup, moved to Arsenal. Uh, was in their development uh, setup as well, and um, and then eventually moved on to to Leeds in the uh, the hope of securing more first team football. Um, he has been a first team player at Ellen Road. He's made thirty five appearances for the club, many of which have been in the uh, the Premier League um, over the uh, the last couple of years. Um, but I think he just he just hasn't really been able to uh, to nail down that spot in the starting eleven. Um, and I think uh, this season with Daniel Farker looking to uh, secure um, automatic promotion. Um, they've been quite busy in the transfer market and uh, with the quality of player that they do have there. Um, it looks like Greenwood is going to be looking to really kind of like get out and um, get get that sort of like 40 plus kind of games under his belt to uh, to build his experience, particularly in the, the second tier. So I think given that he's a northeast lad, um, still lives in Sunderland, I believe. Um, so he's very much kind of like local. Um, and so he's someone who could come in and do a good job for Middlesbrough. So he's uh, he, he is typically a striker. Um, he started his career as a, as a number nine, but I think more recently he's kind of dropped back into a, a, a central midfield kind of role, so a number eight, uh, but also a, a number 10 as well. So he's kind of quite an interesting option. He's that, He kind of fits into that mould that Carrick will be looking for um, from a player who can play in, in multiple different positions and be quite fluid in, as part of that side. And so... You could certainly see him playing as a more offensive number eight. Um, you could see him playing um, as a number nine, as cover for uh, for Latte Laff and uh, any other player that does come in. Uh, but also, he could uh, be the person to, uh, to fill that gap left by Tuba Rackbom after he uh, left for Ajax as well. So um, certainly an interesting one and someone who I believe would be a, a really good signing for uh, for Middlesbrough. And uh, that's certainly one to, uh, to watch out for. Um, in terms of two more players who could potentially come in, um, as I mentioned before, signing a uh, an out-and-out number nine is going to be a real priority. Um, Lati Laff obviously looks like a, a great player from what we've seen of him so far. He's going to really kick on and do well this season. Um, in terms of competition for places for him, at the moment it is looking a little bit thin. Uh, Morgan Rogers is looking bright. Um, probably playing as a number nine isn't his, his best role, so he might be someone who could, uh, could drift out wide or drop into that number 10 role. Um, so kind of signing a, a more out-and-out poacher um, will be a, a bit of a priority for, uh, for Middlesbrough. Um, Keenan Davis is someone who's been linked with a, a move. Um, he plays for Aston Villa at the moment. Uh, 25 years old, um, big, powerful striker who will uh, be an all-around threat um, if he does come to the club. Um, he spent last season on loan with, uh, with Watford um, and scored seven goals and 34 appearances for the club. Um, and previous to that, he, uh, he spent um, he scored five goals. Sorry, uh, during a, a six-month loan spell with Nottingham Forest um, during the other six months that saw them uh, promoted back in uh, back in 2022. So he's someone who knows the championship well. Um, he's someone who could come in and, uh, and really challenge and offer a, a physical presence up front. Um, is he the kind of player who's going to score 20 plus goals? Probably not. Uh, but if he can get 10, 12 goals, um, that will certainly be a a big help and I think what it'll offer in terms of a, a tactical um, option for Michael Carrick, someone who can lead the line and cause some problems for the championship defences, um, I think he would be a, a decent addition. Uh, but one who might be a little bit more exciting for many is, uh, is Tom Cannon, who's been linked with a, a move from uh, from Everton. So he's a 20-year-old striker. Um, he's made four appearances for Everton, but he uh, really captured attention last season with uh, a loan spell with Preston North End, where he scored eight goals in, in 20 appearances. Now, it remains to be seen whether Everton would be looking for a, another loan deal um, to let him get uh, more experience at the other top end of the championship or whether they'd potentially be looking to, uh, to cash in. Um, after all, Everton are uh, kind of having a few financial issues, let's just say, uh, in terms of complying with financial fair play. And so I think pretty much any player at Everton is available at the right price. And uh, for Middlesbrough, who are obviously targeting signings that are going to offer good value for money, I think Cannon could be a player who would be a great one for the future. Um, I think he'd attract a relatively modest fee, given that he's only had one successful loan spell so far. Uh, But that shouldn't detract from the fact that he's a really high potential player who 
could be a, a great signing for Middlesbrough this season and beyond. So um, a few different players there who um, are really going to be uh, on the radar over the, uh, the next couple of days. Um, I think there'll be more to emerge as well. As you know, the last couple of days are just absolutely frantic. Um, it's just a case of kind of like bringing in uh, whatever players that do become available, particularly from the Premier League um, clubs. Um, they've kind of had all summer to uh, to look over their squads and decide who's going to be in their first team plans. And I think when you get to this stage, it's very much a case of saying, right, you're not going to be getting enough first team football here. Um, get yourself down to the championship and, uh, and see what uh, see what you can do. Um, and so what you end up happening, what ends up happening is um, these Premier League clubs just end up circulating giant lists of players who are surplus to requirements at their clubs and could be available on loan. So I think there'll be a lot of different names who will be uh, circulating over the uh, the next couple of days. Um, they're all certainly ones to watch um, in terms of outgoings quickly. Um, Josh Coburn um, sounds like he's agreed a, a deal to go on loan to um, to Plymouth Argyle. Um, yeah, he's someone who is, uh, has a really bright future ahead of him. Um, he's someone who did very well uh, last season with Bristol Rovers. Um, his form kind of dropped off a little bit. He wasn't quite as prolif- uh, prolific as he, what he would have hoped over the other course of the other uh, full campaign. Um, but in a Plymouth side who've just been promoted to the championship, so he'll be getting experience in the second tier. But also a side who really like to play on the front foot. He'll, be, um, he'll certainly be at the centre of a, a lot of a free-flowing attacking play if he does go to Plymouth. So that'll be a great move for him. It's probably one that um, it sounds like would uh, would happen once Middlesbrough have brought someone in, uh, but that'll be a great move for him. Um, as I mentioned before, there'll be uncertainty over Martin Piero's future. Um, it remains to be seen whether he'll be uh, allowed to uh, to move on, um, given that he hasn't really featured during the, the start of the season and hasn't really kind of had the impact after he came back from his loan spell with Boca Juniors. Um, and Paddy McNair is another one who uh, could be one to watch out for in terms of going for the exit door. Um, he's got a year left on his contract. Um, he doesn't really seem to be a central figure in Michael Carrick's plans. Um, he, he's that sort of typical versatile player who, uh, kind of like jack of all trades, master of none, really, which sounds a bit harsh. But um, yeah, he can play centre back, can play right back, can play central midfield. But he hasn't really been quite good enough to uh, to nail down one of those roles under Michael Carrick. And I think with um, with just twelve months left in his contract. Um, he is one of the other higher paid players on, uh, on Middlesbrough's books as well. Um, I do think that's one where there could be a, a potential deal to be done um, in terms of him heading for the exit door. Um, particularly, as I mentioned before, if, uh, if someone like Nat Phillips was able to uh, to come in uh, on loan um, to, to kind of cover for him and add uh, that kind of competition for places at centre-back. So, yeah, it's going to be a, a busy few days uh, for Middlesbrough. Um, I will be uh, will be back with any more updates um, of what's coming um, over the over that time and any deals that look like they could be done. Um, but for now, um, if you are enjoying what you're seeing, then please do subscribe. And um, yeah, if there is any more news, I'll uh, I'll be back and I'll be here to uh, discuss it with you. So um, yeah, hope you enjoy. And uh, here's hoping for a, a busy few days for uh, for Middlesbrough in the transfer market.